Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian, and today's video will be answering the question, what is an edge-induced subgraph? I already did a lesson on vertex-induced subgraphs, so if that's what you're looking for, I have that too on the channel, but today we're talking about edge-induced subgraphs. We're going to use the same beautiful graph that I used in the vertex-induced subgraphs lesson. We're calling it G, here's its vertex set, here's its edge set, and of course you see a drawing of G right there. So we're going to start off by looking at a subgraph of G that is not an edge-induced subgraph. So let's draw some vertices here, and then we'll draw the edges. This is A, B, E, and let's put, I guess we'll do F down here. Now let's label these real quick so we don't forget which is which. That's A, B, this is E, and this down here is F. And in this subgraph, we'll include the edge that goes from A to E, and we'll include the edge that goes from A to B. So this is very clearly a subgraph of G, because all of its vertices and all of its edges are in the graph G. However, it's not an edge-induced subgraph of G, because it has an isolated vertex right here. F is an isolated vertex in this subgraph. An edge-induced subgraph can't have an isolated vertex. So that is technically a correct explanation of why this is not an edge-induced subgraph. But I don't think it really gets at the heart of what an edge-induced subgraph is. An edge-induced subgraph of G is basically the subgraph you get when you take some handful of edges from the graph G and include all of the incident vertices. So in an edge-induced subgraph of G, we'd only be able to get the vertex F if we included an edge that is incident with F. So for example, let's draw the edge that joins B to F. Now, this is an edge-induced subgraph because it's a subgraph that consists of edges from the original graph, of course. We know it has to have edges from the original graph because it's a subgraph, but the key is all of its vertices are vertices incident with the edges in the graph. So an edge-induced subgraph has to have some edges, and it has to have only vertices that are incident with those edges. Those are the endpoints of the edges. So if we wanted to make this not an edge-induced subgraph again, we could draw the vertex D over here and not include any incident edges. This is again a subgraph of G, but it's not an edge-induced subgraph. Now let's erase that and go back to our edge-induced subgraph right here. We have a nice type of notation to describe this edge-induced subgraph. And we can denote it like this. This is the subgraph of G induced by this edge set. This is the edge set containing AB, AE, and BF. So this tells us in our subgraph we're going to have those three edges and the vertices that are incident with those edges, but no other vertices. We use this same notation for vertex-induced subgraphs. Basically, if the set in here is a set of vertices, then we're talking about a vertex-induced subgraph, but since this is a set of edges, we know we're talking about an edge-induced subgraph. So let's look at one more example, but let's start off with the notation and then move to a drawing of the graph. So let's look at the subgraph of G induced by the edge set, let's say DE, FB, AB, and let's say BC. So this is the subgraph of G induced by this edge set. So we know that we have to have all of these edges, and we also have to include all of the vertices incident with those edges. So just to drive home the point of what's going on here, let's draw the edges first, even though I think that's kind of counterintuitive usually when drawing a graph, but in this case I think it's useful. So first we draw the edge DE, then we draw the edge FB, that's like right over here. Then we draw the edge AB, and that's right here. And then we draw the edge BC, and that's right there. So now we have all of our edges right here, but because it's an edge-induced subgraph, of course, we have to include the vertices incident with these edges. So down here is the vertex D, right here is the vertex E, this is F, this is B, this is A, and this is C. Of course, I've tried to maintain uh, a similar shape to how the graph appears up here. So now let's just label these D, E, F, B, A, 
and C. Looking at it now, I think I could have drawn it a bit better. Let's just make it a little bigger so it looks a little nicer. Yeah, something like that. So this here is the subgraph of G induced by the edge set containing DE, FB, AB, and BC. And you see how we constructed this graph. We first drew each edge, so we drew DE, which you see in the original graph right there, then FB, we see in the original graph right there, then AB, which is over here in the original graph, and then finally BC. And then of course, once we draw the edges, we just have to make sure we include the vertices incident with those edges. And so you can see in an edge-induced subgraph, you'll never be able to get an isolated vertex because you can only have vertices that are incident with particular edges. So that's what edge-induced subgraphs are. Basically, they're edges created by taking a handful of edges from a graph and then including all of the incident vertices. So in an edge-induced subgraph, you can't have a vertex without also having an edge incident to that vertex. Looking at the vertex E, for example, you don't have to have every edge that's incident to that vertex, but you can't have it in an edge-induced subgraph without having at least one edge incident to that vertex. So we have the edge DE in our subgraph, but we don't have the edge AE in our subgraph, and that's not a problem. So that's what edge-induced subgraphs are, and of course, some of the notation we use to describe them. So I hope this video helped you understand what edge-induced subgraphs are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.